The British Broadcasting Company Limited (BBC) was a British commercial company formed on the 18th of October 1922 by British and American electrical companies doing business in the United Kingdom and anxious to build sales of their products by ensuring that there were radio broadcasts to which their radio buying customers could listen and licensed by the British General Post Office. Its original office was located on the second floor of Magnet House, the GEC buildings in London and consisted of a room and a small antechamber. On 14 December 1922, John Reith was hired to become the managing director of the company at that address. The company later moved its offices to the premises of the Marconi Company. The BBC as a commercial broadcasting company did not sell airtime but it did carry a number of sponsored programmes paid for by British newspapers. On 31 December 1926, the company was dissolved and its assets were transferred to the non-commercial and Crown Chartered British Broadcasting Corporation BBC. Topic. Brief history Topic. Post office stations In Britain prior to 1922, the General Post Office GPO retained exclusive rights given to it by the government, to manage and control all means of mass communication with the exception of the printed word for which authority had devolved to another governmental entity. The laws which evolved into the Wireless Telegraphy Act 1947, upon which all modern British communication laws are built in one way or another, concern four essential activities. The establishment of a station for purposes of broadcasting. The use of a station for purposes of broadcasting. The installing of a transmitter or receiver, and the use of a transmitter or receiver, all four of these activities require a government license which was originally granted by the General Post Office. Topic. Electrical post offices The invention of the electrical telegraph came under the control of the Telegraph Act 1869 which was based upon a law that forbade the encoding of electrical cables with messages without a license. The messages were viewed as electrical forms of a letter. This invention was followed by the wireless telegraph which was then placed under the Wireless Telegraphy Act 1904. Advent of wireless broadcasting In the USA, the development of the telegraph, wireless telegraph, telephone and wireless telephony proceeded according to the dictates of entrepreneurial commercial interests concerned only with supply and demand for profit. Beginning in August 1920, commercial broadcasting stations programming to the general public had begun broadcasting in the United States, licensed by the Department of Commerce and offering several hours of programming, usually at night. Two of the first stations were WWJ in Detroit, then known as 8MK, and KDKA in Pittsburgh, which has claimed to be the first station specifically licensed for commercial broadcasting. However, commercial licenses were actually not awarded until September 1921. These pioneering stations continue in daily 24 hour operation today under the ownership and management of CBS. In the United Kingdom, all broadcasts were licensed by the GPO, who were reluctant to license any fully commercial stations and only experimental stations were allowed on air. Topic: <laughs> First test broadcasts. Beginning in 1920, a number of licenses were issued to British and American subsidiary companies in Britain for the purpose of conducting experimental transmissions under terms of a license issued by the General Post Office in accordance with the Wireless Telegraphy Act 1904. On 15 June 1920, Marconi's Wireless Telegraph Company, Limited, in Chelmsford, Essex, was licensed to conduct an experimental broadcast from the New Street Works factory, featuring Dame Nellie Melba. The signal was received throughout Europe and as far as Newfoundland, Canada. Further transmissions were also made. Topic. 
Military intervention On 23 November 1920, the General Post Office halted all further transmissions due to complaints of alleged interference with military communications. As the number of wireless receiving sets increased during the early 1920s, the General Post Office came under extreme pressure from hobby listeners to allow the experimental wireless broadcasts to resume. Topic. Test transmissions resume On 14 February 1922, which was two years after ceasing their original transmissions, the Marconi Company was issued a license for experimental transmissions under the call sign 2 Mount. Peter Eckersley was given charge of providing both the broadcast entertainment and the engineering. The station operated out of a hut in a field at Rittle near Chelmsford. On of May 1922, the Marconi Company was issued another license for experimental broadcasts from a station identified as 2LO which was located at Marconi House in the Strand, London. The programme consisted of a boxing commentary of the fight between Kid Lewis and Georges Carpentier. Further tests were also advertised as demonstrations of wireless telegraphy and telephony, which were subject to permission from the Postmaster General. These demonstrations were performed by the Demonstration Department of Marconi's London Wireless Station 2LO. On 16 May 1922, Metropolitan Vickers Company, Ltd. Metrovic, in Manchester commenced test broadcasting from its own station identified as 2ZY. A committee is appointed. On 23 May a committee of representatives was appointed from the Big Six companies, Marconi, Metropolitan Vickers, Radio Communication Company, British Thomson Houston, General Electric and Western Electric. The post office also pressed for the inclusion of a representative from the smaller firms manufacturing radio equipment in the UK, Frank Phillips of Burndept. George Campbell was one of the members on the committee. Topic. Incorporation and shares On 18 October 1922, the British Broadcasting Company Limited was incorporated under the Companies Acts 1908-1917 with a share capital of £60,006, with cumulative ordinary shares valued at £1 each. No further capital could be issued without the Postmaster General's consent. The shares were equally held by six companies Marconi's Wireless Telegraph Company Metropolitan Vickers Electrical Company Radio Communication Company The British Thomson Houston Company The General Electric Company Western Electric Company shareholders gave the BBC the benefit of their respective patents, and only radio sets supplied by BBC companies were permitted to be licensed to receive programmes. The ability of the shareholders to profit from the BBC was limited as part of the agreement with the Postmaster General. The holders of the cumulative ordinary shares are entitled to receive out of the profits of the company a fixed cumulative dividend at the rate of 7.5% per annum on the capital for the time being paid up thereon but are not entitled to any further or other participation in profits. <laughs> <laughs> Directors The RT Hon, Lord Gainford, Hedlam Hall, Gainford, Durham, Chairman Geoffrey C. Isaacs, Marconi House, Strand, WC2, Managing Director, Marconi's Wireless Telegraph Co. Archibald McKinstry, The Red Lodge, South Hill Avenue, Harrow on the Hill, Joint Managing Director of Metropolitan Vickers Electrical Export Company Major Basil Binion, Hawthorndean Hayes, Kent, Managing Director of Radio Communication Company John Gray, Bewley, Park Farm Road, Bromley, Kent, Chairman of the Hotpoint Electric Appliance Company BTH 
Sir William Noble, Magnet House, Kingsway, London WC2, Director of the General Electric Company Henry Mark Pease, 18 Kensington Court Mansions, London W8, Managing Director of Western Electric Company The initial remit of the British Broadcasting Company was to establish a nationwide network of radio transmitters many of which had originally been owned by member companies, from which the BBC was to provide a national broadcasting service. Topic international influences The British Broadcasting Company was formed using a blueprint that the U.S. Navy and the General Electric Company had attempted to institute in the USA. Early in World War I, all of the ship-to-shore and transatlantic radio stations controlled by a U.S. subsidiary company of Marconi's Wireless Telegraph Company, limited in Chelmsford, England, were seized and handed to the U.S. Navy for the duration of the war. After the war, the U.S. Congress forced the U.S. Navy to divest itself of the stations and they turned to the General Electric Company which in 1919 formed a subsidiary called the Radio Corporation of America. With the U.S. Navy on its board, RCA then absorbed the former Marconi stations. In 1926 RCA created the National Broadcasting Company, the first network in the United States. Peaking in the 1930s, there were attempts to bring all radio communications in America back under single monopoly control by using the patent laws. This move failed. The Western Electric Company Limited in the UK was originally formed as a subsidiary of American Telephone and Telegraph Company AT&T in the USA where it served as its manufacturing subsidiary to equip the AT&T Bell telephone system. British Thomson Houston Company Limited was a controlled UK subsidiary of the General Electric Company in the USA. The Hot Point Electric Appliance Company Limited was formed by British Thomson Houston in 1921. The only other company later added to the original shareholders of the British Broadcasting Company Limited was Burndept Limited. It represented the interests of over 20 small electrical manufacturers in the UK. Topic. Income The British Broadcasting Company did not sell air time for commercials but its license did allow for it to carry sponsored programming, and eight such sponsored broadcasts were aired in 1925. However, the main source of its income was from the sale of radio receiving sets and transmitters manufactured by its shareholding member companies as well as from a portion of the government GPO license fee that had to be purchased by BBC listeners. Topic: 1922 to 1926 BBC timeline. Topic 1922. The 18th of October, British Broadcasting Company Limited formed but not registered. The 1st of November, first broadcast receiving license introduced. The 14th of November, 2LO began broadcasting on medium wave from Marconi House to London with the first newscast read by Arthur Burroughs, first director of programmes. 15 15th of November, 5IT in Birmingham and 2ZY in Manchester began broadcasting. All three BBC stations broadcast general election results. The 14th of December, John C. W. Reith hired as the company's managing director. The 15th of December, British Broadcasting Company Limited registered as an incorporated company. The 24th of December, 5NO began broadcasting to Newcastle. 30 30th of December, John Reith began work as managing director. The 31st of December, 35,774 receiving licenses issued by General Post Office. BBC staff numbered four employees. Topic 1923. The 18th of January, Postmaster General Neville Chamberlain issued a broadcasting license to the British Broadcasting Company Limited from the General Post Office. The 13th of February, 5WA began broadcasting to Cardiff. 
The 6th of March, 5SC began broadcasting to Glasgow. The 16th of March, first return of shareholders filed. Substantiated claim, Clark 2010. The 1st of May, studios opened at Savoy Hill. The 6th of June, Edgar Wallace became the first British radio sports reporter when he made a report on the derby. The 29th of August, first network news delivered by all BBC stations. The 28th of September, first published edition of Radio Times. The 1st of October, publication of Sykes Committee report on broadcasting. The 10th of October, 2BD began broadcasting to Aberdeen. The 17th of October, 6 p.m. began broadcasting to Bournemouth. The 16th of November, 6 FL began broadcasting to Sheffield as the first relay station. The 26th of November, first experimental broadcast to North America. The 30th of December, first landline relay from Radio La Paris, France. The 31st of December, first broadcast of Big Ben chimes. BBC staff numbered 177 employees. Topic 1924. The 5th of February, first daily broadcast of the Greenwich Time Signal. The 17th of February, first daily broadcast of the Big Ben Time Signal. The 28th of March 5 PY began broadcasting to Plymouth as a relay station. The 1st of May 2 EH began broadcasting to Edinburgh as a relay station. The 11th of June 6 LV began broadcasting to Liverpool as a relay station. The 8th of July 2 LS began broadcasting to Leeds and Bradford as a relay station. The 9th of July, 5XX began experimental broadcasts on AM Longwave from Chelmsford. The 15th of August, 6 Kilo Henrys began broadcasting to Hull as a relay station. The 15th of September, 2BE began broadcasting to Belfast. The 16th of September, 5NG began broadcasting to Nottingham as a relay station. The 21st of October, 6ST began broadcasting to Stoke on Trent as a relay station. The 12th of November, 2DE began broadcasting to Dundee as a relay station. The 26th of November, first transatlantic relay broadcast from KDKA, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, USA. The 12th of December, 5SX began broadcasting to Swansea as a relay station. The 31st of December, over 1 million receiving licenses had been issued by the General Post Office. The BBC had 20 radio transmitting stations in operation and 465 employees. Topic: 1925. Various dates, eight sponsored concerts are broadcast by the BBC, see Briggs History, Volume 1, in reference section below. The 3rd of April, BBC Deputy Managing Director Rear Admiral Charles Carpendale became President of the First General Assembly of the International Broadcasting Union at Geneva, Switzerland. The 6th of April, 2LO transmitter power increased during move from Marconi House to the roof of Selfridges Department Store in Oxford Street. The 17th of July, first edition published of the Radio Supplement. The 27th of July, 5XX Experimental AM Longwave Station moved from Chelmsford to Daventry where it commenced regular broadcasting on 1,600 metres. The 31st of December, BBC staff numbered 658 employees. Topic: 1926. The 4th of January, John Reith began to impose his dress code on BBC radio announcers who had to wear evening dress to match BBC performing artists in evening dress. The 16th of January, Catholic priest and broadcaster F. R. Ronald Knox broadcasts broadcasting from the barricades, a satirical news report of a fictional riot. 
a significant part of the public believes the program to be genuine, and Knox's satire provokes a minor panic similar to Orson Welles's The War of the Worlds broadcast twelve years later. 5 March, Parliamentary Crawford Committee published its broadcasting report which called for the takeover of the British Broadcasting Company Limited by a government-owned non-commercial British Broadcasting Commission. The 18th of June, BBC The Radio Supplement was replaced by BBC World Radio Publication. The 22nd of July, final return of shareholders filed. Substantiated claim, Clark 2010. 14 November, the International Broadcasting Union issued its Geneva Plan which reduced the number of BBC wavelengths. This forced the company to restructure by replacing its local radio stations with regional radio stations. 16 December, over 100 staff and directors of the British Broadcasting Company Limited attended a dinner party for Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin. 20 December, publication of the Crown Charter and license agreements creating the British Broadcasting Corporation. 31 December, the General Post Offices had issued two and a quarter million receiving licenses. The contracts of 773 British Broadcasting Company staff were terminated and, with the dissolution of the company, shareholders were paid at par value. All assets, plant and copyrights held by the British Broadcasting Company were transferred to the Postmaster General. Topic 1927. The 1st of January, the British Broadcasting Corporation is established and all assets received by the Postmaster General from the British Broadcasting Company are transferred. John Reith takes office as the first Director General, and all staff previously employed by the company are engaged under new contracts to the corporation. 1928. Topic. See also BBC Radio, a specific article about BBC domestic radio broadcasting services Radio Drama Company, a BBC company of actors established in 1939 BBC Television, a specific article about BBC domestic television services BBC World Service, a specific article about BBC external radio and television broadcasting services <laughs>